Hey everybody, it's Rockula, and welcome back to Rockula Retrospective. This is day 18 of my Vita series, 30 Bands in 30 Days. Vita stands for a vlog every day in April, and today's band is Melt Banana. Normally, with the bands on this list, I appreciate all of their material. In fact, I tend to like the earlier material from most of the bands. This is not the case with Melt Banana. Their early material is way too raw for me and they don't have the sonic range that they have achieved now. One of the things I have to say beforehand is that I do not know as much about this band as most in this series, but they have played a very pivotal role in my latest development. I am just starting to figure out where the band transitions from raw noise to the point where I start to appreciate them, and I hope to do a more detailed review sometime later. The biggest issue most people have with this band is the vocals, and if you can't deal with them, you probably won't like Melt Banana. But the thing that really attracts me to Melt Banana is the guitar. This is not your average shredder trying to blind you with technical brilliance or seduce you with honey-filled grooves. The guitars are frantic rhythms punctuated by spikes of noise and a sonic blanket of effects pedals. They still occupy the same space as a traditional guitar part, they just speak a different language. The bass is a punchy and steady foundation and is the least frantic instrument in the band. They often use program drums on their recordings and a live drummer for gigs. I got my first Melt Banana album at the KNON garage sale. It was Cellscape and it was way better than the material I had heard before. This album is a perfect balance of rock and noise music. No one track stands out and I listen to it as an entire album instead of a collection of songs. I listened to the previous album, Teeny Shiny, and gave it a cursory listen. It was pretty decent, but I'm going to have to give it more of a listen later on. I saw them live for the first time at 7th Street Entry in Minneapolis, and it was a magical experience. I bought the album Bambi's Dilemma at that show. This album has a little bit more of an accessible feel, but just barely. It has a couple of more melodic songs like Green Eyed Devil. The best song on this album is Cat Brain Land. My next purchase was at the next Melt Banana show. I bought Light Live version 0.0 and enjoyed it very much. When Melt Banana came out with a new album, I was in pretty bad financial straits and wasn't able to see them on that tour, but my friend did make a copy of the album Fetch and I liked it very much. Now that I have the money, I need to go buy it for real because this band deserves my support. Fetch is a transition because they have dispensed with the band and switched over to using backing tracks live. I know this review is a bit different from most bands that I cover because I try to give you a brief but comprehensive take on all the material that the band has. I have experienced only a small part of the Melt Banana catalog and I intend to do more investigation but I can honestly say that the three albums I currently own have made as much of an impact on me as any other band's material on this list. Can you help flesh out our view of Melt Banana with your opinions and observations? Please let me know in the comments section below. Also, please like, subscribe, and share. Thanks for checking out my Vita series, 30 Bands in 30 Days. Tomorrow is day 19, and the band is Primus. I'm Rockula, and this is Rockula Retrospective.